2 Kings chapter 18. Now it came to pass, in the third year of Hosea, that's the last king of Israel, the son of Eli, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, south, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign. He reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. So here's a good king. So, I don't wonder if he got some of his special looking at what happened at north. Now let's see what a good king does. He removed the high place. They've been in trouble. They've been a problem. And break the images. And cut down the groves. And break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it. And called it Nash them. So that serpent in the wilderness, in the book of Numbers, has become a god. And they've fallen down to worship it. Hezekiah, who's a good king, who obeyed God, did that was right. He got rid of the gods. He got rid of the religion. He didn't post in the land that you can bring whatever religion you want. He got rid of it. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel. There you go. So that after him, watch, was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. So Hezekiah is raised up by God. Why is he raised up? Because he put down gods and religion. Got to get that. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, the law, which the Lord God commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered wheresoever he went forth. Now, you cannot apply this to us today. Paul, on this side of Calvary, did what God told him to do. I'll cite a few things. Paul has sinned. And as far as the worldly means of Paul, he didn't prosper. He spent most of his life in jail. He lost his head. He had everybody who, who left him. When he writes to Timothy, his, his departing message, his departing epistle, he says, only Luke is with me. So there's a vast difference. Two men that did right with God. Two different outcomes. Prosper whithsoever he went forth, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria. That's the same king that came and took Israel and served him not. He smoked the Philistines, even to Gaza, and the borders thereof, from the tower to watchmen to the fenced city. So he's got power and military by God. He tells the king of Assyria, no. Philistines, battle, victory. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hosea, the son of Elah, king of Israel, that Shalemezer, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. Now we're going back in a little history here. We're going back to see during Hezekiah's reign, the end of Israel came. In the middle of Hezekiah, Israel's gone. And at the end of three years, they took it. Three year besieged. Even the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is the ninth year of Hosea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. There it is, it's gone. And it don't ever come back. And the king of Syria did carry away Israel into Assyria, northern or northern Israel, and them in Hala and Harbor by the river Gazan. And their cities of the Medes. North Israel, they're gone. Because this is the reason why. Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God. But transgressed his covenant. We read that chapter 17. 
And all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded, and would not hear them, nor do them. We read that in chapter 17 last night. Now the 14th year of King Hezekiah, did Shernacherib, king of Syria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them. Now, I want you to think in mind of chapter 18 of the parable of the sower. I want you to think about here's a guy going out doing what God told him. Go sow out the seed. And the very first seed he throws out, the Bible says the birds came and ate it. And when Jesus tells us what, what that parable means, that the birds are Satan. As soon as someone steps forth to do that which is right, the enemy will come forth. Hezekiah is doing right, wants to do right, and here comes the enemy. And whenever you step out and say, I'm going to live by God, you better turn around and look because there will be Satan and his enemies, his foes. And they come in all forms, person, place, or things. Hezekiah, the king of Jews, sent to the king of Assyria. To Lake is saying, I have offended. Return from me. That which thou puttest on me will I bear. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. Give me this money. Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord. Uh-oh. And in the treasure of the king's house. Quite happens quite often down Jerusalem. At that time, did Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord, and from the pillars Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlaid, and gave it to the king of Syria. Well, I need money; I'm going to steal it from God. And many people do that when trouble comes up in their life, problems. I'll stop giving to the Lord. And verse seventeen. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Raphesus and Rabshika, pride, loud mouth guy, from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. So here comes a huge army going to do battle. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they came up, they came and stood by the conduit. That's the first time that word shows up. It's a waterway man-made, of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the Fuller's Field. It gives you the exact spot where this is. And when they had called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hekiah, which was over the household. This is a man in charge. This would be like Joseph in charge. And Shibna, the scribe, he's in charge of the priest is in charge of the law he's in charge of the writings and Joah the son of Asaph Asaph the recorder now this would probably be Joe writing what we're reading now he records things and Rabshika prideful big mouth Syrian said unto them speak ye now to Hezekiah Hezekiah is not there tell Hezekiah thus saved the great king that would be Shennacherib, the king of Assyria. What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? You're not relying on my king. You're not relying on my boss. Thou sayest, but they are but vain words. I have counsel to strength thee for war. I'm, I'm ready to battle you. Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Who are you going to turn to other than Sennacherib and me? Now, behold, thou trustest upon the staff of a bruised reed. And you got to think of a cane. So you have seen anybody walking with a cane. You know, this is what the subject is here. But look what he says, as a bruised reed. Pat, picture some, someone who needs a cane. And they're walking down and the, and the cane is a leaf. It, it bends. It's broken. It's been bruised. Even upon Egypt. So what he's saying right now, you're relying on the world and not us. 
You run down to Egypt, you haven't run to Assyria. On which if a man lean on that cane for support, it shall go into his hand like a thorn. You're going to rely on Egypt. It's going, to, it's going to bruise your hand. It's going to give you sores in your hand. And pierce it. You won't be able to use your hand. you got a sore. You've been stabbed by the people that you relied on. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, unto all that trust on him. Now look at this guy. You can't rely on anybody but us. Sounds like America. But, if you say unto me, all right, if it's not Pharaoh, we trust in the Lord Jehovah our God. Look at that. Look at that. If you trust in the God of the Hebrews, you trust in the God that's in that temple. Is not he, now watch, whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has taken away? Absolutely not. Those are temples and altars and high places to small GODS. So you see what happens when you have your Christmas tree, when you have your worldly things in the church. People look at it as like, oh, I guess that's God's worship. Your falseness that you allow in your church to heathen say, oh, that must be God. There it is. You give a terrible testimony of God. And has said to Judah and Jerusalem, ye shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. There it is. There's the brazen altar. Now you gotta wonder what happened to that altar that was built by the priest that was called for by the by the king before Ahaz. Remember, he put another altar in there. I would assume that Hezekiah got rid of that altar. So I would assume here, going by the testimony of uh, uh, Rabbashikah, there's only one altar right there. Hezekiah got rid of the other one. Amen. Now, therefore, now, therefore, he's going to keep he's going to keep speaking. Now he's going to start ranking on God. You don't want to rank on God. You don't want to open up your big mouth to God. Therefore, I pray thee. Give pledges to my Lord, the king of Assyria. Give us the money. I will deliver thee 2,000 horses if thou art able to part to set riders on. You can only have enough population to fill our horses, I'll give you. You don't have enough of military strength. He's ranking. I don't know if they do or not. You can't fulfill what I can give you. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master sir you can't battle us you can't compete with us you don't have the strength in us our great assyrian army even if i gave you horses to fight us you couldn't put enough men on them we're the great assyrian army and put thy trust on egypt for chariots and for horsemen i don't know am i now come up without the Lord against the place to destroy it. The Lord said to me, go up against this land, Judah, and destroy it. Why would God tell him he's doing right? After what Hezekiah has just done, got rid of religion. Try saying that a couple times. God would not come up and say, okay, I want you going. God was, was pleased. So now he's lying in the name of the Lord. He's a false prophet. Then said Elkiah, the son of Hilkiah, and Shebna, and Joah, unto Rabshika. This is the Jews speaking to Rabshika, the Assyrian. Speak, I pray thee, to thy servants in the Syrian language. Stop speaking Hebrew. Let's talk Syrian. For we understand it. We understand Syrian language. And talk not with with us in the Jews Jews language, in all the ears of the people that are on the wall, they can hear us. Let's talk. Sir, they may not know Syrian. Let's press one for Syrian. How's that sound? And what these men of Hezekiah are saying is, they're going to weaken our forces if they hear what's going on. 
And in other words, Rav Shika, just shut up. Will ya? If you're going to talk, let's do it in your own language. But Rav Shika said unto them, has my master sent me to thy master? That would be Hezekiah. To meet to thee, to speak these words? Has he not sent me to the men which they, which sit on the wall? Hey, I can, told me to speak to those men on the wall. That they may eat their own dung, disgusting, and drink their own piss with you? He got angry. And what you see in verse 27 is a loud rebuke of anger to what they just said. They made a proper suggestion. This Talk your language. And almost did an H with them on the walls. You guys hear what I have to say. It's disrespect. Rav Shika, he's just running the mouth in anger. Then Rav Shika stood and cried with a loud voice. In the Jews language. Purposely to be heard. And spank saying, hear the word the great king. That would be for him. Shennacherib, the king of Assyria, thus saith the king. I don't know. Shennacherib's not there. Let not Hezekiah deceive you. So Hezekiah, in the name of God, in the works of God, in the trust of God, doing what God has told him to do by the law, he's going to deceive you. For he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. When the Syria comes, when Sennacherib comes, when I come back, we're going to kick your butt. That's what are you saying? Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, Jehovah. Look at that. Talking to Jews in the Jews' language. Saying, the Lord will surely deliver us. And this city shall not be delivered in the hand of the king of Syria. That's what Hezekiah is going to tell you. There's faith and trust in the Lord. Don't believe Hezekiah. And the Holy Spirit has told us that Hezekiah has put all the trust and has obeyed the law. Rapshika is going to cause some trouble with God. Hearken not to Hezekiah. Don't obey your king. You know, that's a Democrat. We, we want to listen to Republicans only. For thus saved the king of Assyria. Make an agreement, that's the first time that word shows up, agreement, with me by present. Give me a bribe. Give me some money. Give me something. And come out to me, and then eat ye every man of his own vine, grapes. Every man one of his own fig tree. And drink ye every one of the waters, of his cistern. That's the first time cistern shows up. Come on, I'll give you food. I'll give you water. Until I come and take you away in the land. Like unto your own land. Just come with me now. So we don't have to have the battle. And. I got to sneeze. Phew, excuse me. Uh, like your own land. I got a piece of land. Just like your own land. Why should they leave that? They're in unity with God. They are pleasing God. The king is in merit with God. Why would they leave? Why would they fear an enemy? A land of corn and wine. A land of bread and vineyards. A land of oil, olive, and of honey. That's an imitation of the promised land given to the Jewish people. I don't know if their land is just like that. That you may live. And not die. Hey, if they stay right with God and do what God tells them to do, God's going to bless them. God's going to fulfill the desire. According to the law, they'll have the wine. They'll have the oil. They'll have the multitude of, of beasts giving birth to other beasts. And mothers giving birth to children. And peace if they obey God. If they run to the king of Syria for hope, that's the trouble they got when they ran into Egypt. So Satan is trying to get them to trust and do to someone outside of God. And hearken not unto Hezekiah when he persuades you. The law said you're to do what the king tells you to do. It would be complete rebellion for you to tell the people not to do what the king is doing. Romans 13 says obey the powers that be. Well, we got a wicked king called Nero. 
obey the powers that be, both Peter and Paul have said that. I don't like this group of people. Obey the powers that be. Rabshika is telling the Jews, do not obey your righteous king who is obeying God. Saying the Lord will deliver us. He's mocking God. He's saying God can't get with you. God cannot do what Sennacherib and we can do as Assyrians. You got a food a land of milk and honey? Oh, the Assyrian land is so much better. That's what it just said. Has any of the gods, watch this, of the nations delivered at all this his hand out of try it again? Has any of the gods of the nations delivered at all? His land out of the hand of the king of Syria. No. Because they're not God. They're losing gods. Where are the gods of the Hamas and Arpad? False gods, dead gods, can't listen gods. Where are the gods of the Sepharium? They're gods that have ears that can't hear, eyes that can't see. Hina and Iva. Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Oh, oh. Remember we went a chapter ago, all the gods, chapter 17, verses 30, 31, and 32. Rabshika, a heathen with the king of Assyria, just promoted to tell us what exactly is going on in Israel. They had all these gods. And with all these gods, guess what happened? They fell to Assyria. Because God was angry with them for having all these gods. And God said, go ahead, let those gods help you. And they're unable to help. Listen, when your mind's gone, your money can't help you. Who are they among all the gods of the country? That have delivered their country out of my hand. False gods. Lifting up Sennacherib as a god. And the Assyrian as a god holy place. That the Lord, gives Jehovah, should deliver Israel out of my hand. Listen, all those other gods, they're failures. Including your god is what Rabshidah is saying. Your God, Jehovah of the Bible that created the heavens and earth, he's no better than any of the other gods. Isn't that what Israel had? Wasn't Israel people of God? Look at the foul name that Israel gave about the God of the Bible. Today, I'm a Christian. You give a foul, you don't even know what Christian means. I go to church, you don't even know what church means. But the people held their peace. The Jews held their peace. And answer them not a word. Watch this. For the king's commandment was saying, answer him not. Rabshika is telling them, do not obey your king Hezekiah. They are obeying king Hezekiah. How are they obeying king Hezekiah? Don't answer. Just be quiet. Um, sing. Ignore. And that's exactly what they're doing. Then came Elkiah, the son of Helkiah, which was over the household. This is the guy in charge of the king's house. And Sheba the scribe, and John the son of Apheth the recorder. They're coming back to report to Hezekiah. To Hezekiah with their clothes rent, I think. Yep, their clothes rent. And told him the words of Rabshika. So, Hezekiah is not there. Hezekiah sends ambassadors out to him. And they report back to Hezekiah. This is what he said. Why is the recorder there? All right, let me read to you what he said. And just read. And we have it recorded in 2 Kings. Like I said, possibly what we just read in 2 Kings, that's what was recorded. And we'll pick up more. Glory to God. 